Coming up on Oakdale Update, we'll take a look back at 2015 with our mayor, Stan Kowalski, and we'll preview some upcoming events. Stay tuned. Oakdale Update is straight ahead. Hello, welcome to Oakdale Update. I'm your host, Frank Orsello. This is the City of Oakdale's news and information program about your community. 2015 has been an exciting and busy year in the City of Oakdale. With me to talk about the past year is our Mayor, Stan Kowalski. Stan, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on Oakdale oh, Update. Thank you, Frank. Okay, well let's start out, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I had been on city council for 12 years, and then uh, the opportunity to run for mayor in uh, November 2014 occurred, and I was fortunate enough to get elected mayor, and it's been an honor and privilege and a really busy year since. Yep. Now, you live in Oakdale, obviously, right? Yeah, for the last 29 years. And you've got kids here that went to... Yeah, raised four kids from uh, diapers right on up through high school and college. They're all college graduates. They went to Tartan High School, so... They're all gone now? You well, them? I still have one at home. <laughs> okay. Well, that's common. Pretty, that's pretty common. Okay, so uh, now you were elected in November of 2014. Yes. So how is it going their first year? How is it going as mayor? I think it's really going well. Um, people have been very receptive of me. Uh, I replaced an outstanding mayor in Carmen Srack, four-term mayor, and Carmen's been really supportive, and people have really embraced me now. And uh, we've got a new council makeup with two new members, a new city administrator, and myself. So it's been a really exciting time of change. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, because I'm on the EDC and I'm involved with the city, but uh, it takes a lot of time. And I know as mayor, you, there's just no limit to how much time you could put into it. Right. So how are you dealing with, how's your employer dealing with you yeah. being gone as much as you are? And I know, because I see you all over the place. Oh, I, I've got a great employer, Graco Incorporated. They're locally based, a worldwide company, and they're just very supportive. Uh, luckily, I have a lot of vacation time, so I've used about two to three weeks of vacation during this last year, just doing mayor duties during the uh, day, or I make up time. Mm -hmm. So I've uh, spent a lot of time away from work, but I've got a, an employer that totally supports public service. And by the way, I hope to retire in my first term coming up, and then it'll give me even more time to be dedicated. Retire to from the role. work? You're ready? You're ready? Retire as me, uh, from Graco, and that'll give me more time to even eas more easily focus on the duties. How old are you, if I might ask? I'm 58, so I'm hoping uh, perhaps. Uh, I don't want to say, but it's uh, not too far off. Really? Yeah. Hopefully when I'm 59. Oh, good. I'm retiring. So the thing I wanted to point out on that is I put money aside, very disciplined in my lifestyle, very disciplined with my dollars for that I could retire early or would have the option to retire early. Mm -hmm. So I look at that as being a, a key to being a mayor and stewardship of the city's money, that if I watch my money that closely, I'm going to be do a good job with the public's money. Absolutely. Now I've got to say though, if you're going to almost be a full-time mayor, are you going to, you have to be careful that you don't too, get no. too involved, right? I no. mean, you've got a uh, staff up at the city that are wonderful, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I'm doing everything I can or what's appropriate right now, so I won't necessarily increase my time as mayor, yeah. but what it will do is allow me, <laughs> rather than tell my work where I have to miss something very important at work to do something what I think at this point in my life is even more important for the city. Yeah. I won't have to do that. I won't have to compromise my work. won't have to make my this work. a serious decision. So I'll have time to get into some other community service, other yeah. goals. So. Okay. All right. Yes. All right, now uh, we've got a lot of stuff here. Uh, uh, a lot of stuff has happened in Oakdale this last year. Yeah. And I'm going to touch on some of it, and you just give me a quick uh, rundown on uh, a summation of it, okay? First of all, we've got a new city administrator. Tell us about that. Yeah, Bart Fisher. Uh, we've had such a good city staff and good city council that when that job came open, we had uh, 
over 30 candidates, and I believe we narrowed it down to 11, narrowed it down to four finalists. So Bart Fisher comes from us with some really good experience. He started as an intern about a dozen years ago yes. with our city. He went on to Newport in some key roles there. Uh, he went on to um, Chaska, the city of Chaska, which has some similarities to Oakdale, and then he last his last job before Oakdale was city administrator of Falcon Heights. Mm -hmm. So he's really has uh, uh, developed himself to where he was really a good candidate. We had a lot of good candidates, but Bart rose to the top, so we're really mm -hmm. happy to have him. Okay, that's good. Okay, now uh, we're going to talk about s new businesses that opened up in Oakdale. Yeah. Hard to believe so many yeah. and such huge ones. And let's start out with Hy-Vee, Hy-Vee, Hy-Vee. How's that? Oh, hy V <laughs> just, uh, it's, uh, that was about a seven to eight year project getting, going from the Oakdale Mall, condemning it, knocking it down, clearing the site, and all the different people that came together from our own <coughs> business association supporting that through our state legislature, a, a big, and our city staff doing a wonderful job to put all the pieces together. And, to have that store finally open up a few months back. Mm -hmm. It's been a big hit, mm -hmm. puts Oakdale on the map. It's a real game changer in that area because yes. we've put some really nice improvements in the 10th Street and 694, that interchange. Mm -hmm. So right now we're already seeing the benefits of the Bergen Plaza uh, across the street at Bergen Plaza, and that's already taking shape in the significant yes. improvements. I see they're doing some improvements on the property and yes. that's been probably overdue. Yeah. And the other thing in relation to Hy-Vee here across the street is uh, uh, Cub is going to put in, right. redo the old Kmart. They're relocating on the Kmart site and they're re-architecturing the whole building. It's going to be a, basically a brand new building right mm -hmm. now. The parking lot's totally redone. Uh, yes. I'm a big believer that when you make get an improvement like Hy-Vee, uh, hy Vee adds a gas station. We've got a restaurant, Hardee's, that's just been announced. We've got a new restaurant called D Spot in the uh, Bergen Plaza, across the street in the Bergen Plaza area. And now we've got Cub expanding mm -hmm. with a drive up pharmacy, a full service liquor store, and a large grocery store. Uh, all good improvements. I'm a big believer that when uh, rising tides, rising waters raises sure. all ships. So yep. competition's good and it's making yep. improvements on yep. both sides of the road. Well, Cub Foods would not be, unless they thought they could do well, would not have spent, right. and I'm right. hearing it's like, in, well, 23, 4 million that they're putting into that right. property. That's a lot of money. And a lot of families shop at, do their grocery shopping at a couple different stores. Sure. So I think both can be very successful. Yes. And we're hopeful of yes. that. Yeah, things have changed. In the old days, people used to go load their grocery, sh their carts with everything from one store, but they right. don't do that anymore. They right. do a lot of traveling. Exactly. But anyway, okay, so another, uh, and I don't, I'm not familiar with this, Sorrow and Bergstrom, what is that? Yeah, that's a law firm. They're okay. located on 10th Street in, uh, and, uh, um, 10th and Inwood, there's a really nice big business park there. In fact, one of the last sites on that has been bought out. Oh, oh, so we're open. Uh, by, by Beacon Properties there? Yeah, Beacon oh, Shore. So okay, we're even very, very good. Uh, okay, and then Fractional Toy Store. Yeah, that's located on uh, 694 uh, and 94, the interchange right on the corner. By the corner. crossroads? They, the crossroads they uh, specialize in big boy toys, uh, toys for families like rent RVs rather than buy an RV or rather than buy a recreational vehicle or a boat, you can like lease one for the week or the weekend and they're yes. doing, I guess, really well. I hear that, yeah, that's very good. And then uh, there's another one, Hearing, uh, hearing of, Me of America. Yeah. It's a hearing aid, hear yeah. audio. Again, show. yeah. And that's where? That's right near the uh, high V. again, uh, mm -hmm. in the, uh, Dr. Tim, dentistry that's building, right the all dentist family building. building. That's that's, right. So that's right on uh, Hadley and 10th Street. Yes. And uh, they're serving uh, all people of hearing needs, but with a growing senior population, they're providing a great service of good hearing aids. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've got a diverse, eight new businesses this year, all diverse. In fact, down by your uh, shop off a of century. That's the next one, loads of laundry. Yes. Uh, the state-of-the-art laundry equipment. So if you, even if you just had typical clothes, 
with the most high quality machines to preserve the quality of your coals or if you had drapes or linens and sheets. The latest, greatest uh, it is. equipment. And I have used them, uh, as you know, I own a barbershop and I use them, they do my towels. And I got, they do them and they fold them and they yeah. bring them over to me, of course, they're right yeah. next door. But it, it's so fluffy and so they smell so yeah. good. I mean, geez. So they're doing, and they're yeah. very busy too, I might add. And now, and we're going to get into that, uh, how they how they put this together. So, But, uh, okay, executive suites. Yes, they're uh, again on 694 and 94 in the um, uh, Dave Johnson buildings, yes. uh, Crosswoods, Crossroads buildings, and they uh, basically have uh, leased a significant amount of office space, and they provide a high quality office where a, a law firm or an insurance agent can move right in, and it's all set up, mm -hmm. the latest uh, computer equipment, uh, Printing receptionists, so they can, so businesses that lease this space from them can just concentrate on their business, and uh, and it makes for you real uniform, uh, top end, uh, capital type equipment mm -hmm. in their office space, so they don't have to get worried about. What a those. heck of an idea! Yeah. Huh? Why didn't you think of that? Yeah, I don't <laughs> I know. know. <laughs> and, and I've said this about that loads of laundry. Why didn't I think of that? Right. But, Anyway, uh, and then we have uh, Northern Home Technologies. What's that one all about? Yeah, they're located on Helmo and uh, Bob Stiglitz's buildings, uh, um, kind of between, uh, oh, they're right between uh, 10th Street and 15th on Helmo. And they're actually some local uh, young professionals which provide uh, home um, security, home uh, sound systems. Uh, we have a lot of nice housing stock in Oakdale, growing housing stock, um, and a lot of people want that latest technology mm -hmm. in their homes. Mm -hmm. And I think they also can do a little bit of light commercial. Okay. And then, of course, we have a new Super America coming in. Yes, on Highway 5, kind of mm -hmm. near the Target store. We're excited about that. We hope that that increases the traffic volume on 5 and, and le leads itself to uh, more customers coming into that area for that we can even expand other retail opportunities including restaurants. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking of restaurants, we have several new ones. Yes. And just as an aside there, when we first started the EDC 20 years ago, I can't remember, I was on the original, the thing we worked so hard to do is to get restaurants come to our town yeah. and they wouldn't talk to us. They just wouldn't talk to us, but things were different. I mean, that was, we still right. had farm fields in those days too. But we got yeah. several new ones now. Let's go, let's walk through them one time. Uh, first of all, we have Katrina's. Right. This is a, a, some local business people with uh, fresh made uh, Spanish Mexican <coughs> food off of Century Avenue. Again, kind of near your uh, barber. It's, it's uh, cross street, street. Across the area from uh, Goodyear Tire Company. Yeah. yeah so pretty close so to 10th yeah. and uh, yes. Century. And uh, they cater and make daily fresh uh, Mexican Spanish type food mm -hmm. and uh, very Walk good. through the very line good. and they set it up for yeah. you. It's quite interesting. Pretty good food too. Uh, and uh, of course we have Hy-Vee Market Grill, which right. is semi really good. I mean it's uh, yeah, it's a pretty classy place. Right, I've uh, been to both of these so far quite a bit. And Hy-Vee, a lot of people don't know what's there yet. And uh, they have uh, everything from breakfast to uh, late evening dining, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's uh, really a great atmosphere that kind of mm -hmm. serves that right atmosphere to be able to serve all types of meals. Mm -hmm. And they have a very nice bar there. And they have a bar there, and they have uh, happy hours too, I understand. Yeah, in yes. late night happy hours. And then they have additional dining for more of a lunch or if you're on the go right inside the store. That's yes. uh, kind of almost a buffet where you take your plate and you yeah. go, you can take it home or you can go sit over in the corner and yeah. eat it. It's, yeah. it's, it's just a heck of an idea. It is, it's you a know. great setup. Uh, let's see, Katrina, and we have D-Spot. Now, yeah. tell us about that one. Again, uh, D-Spot moved from Maplewood. They're in Bergen Plaza across the street from the hy V. A a wonderful expanded restaurant. They specialize in chicken wings, of, very all sorts of flavored chicken wings, but I think you can get burgers, they have a variety of tap beers. Again, uh, one of the top chicken wing places in Twin mm -hmm. Cities. 
again, I think they could see the potential of this area around 10th Street and 694 starting to uh, become a really good a go -to retail spot. spot. A go-to yes. spot. Now, they came from uh, the Maplewood side. They were over behind McDonald's on Minnehaha right. and Century Avenue. Right. So they must have felt that there was a reason to come out and expand because they're about three times as big a space, I would think, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think they're going now for a little more of a family. Uh, in Maplewood, they're a little more of a young teenage, young adult crowd, and, mm -hmm. and they're certainly going to still keep that, but I think they're going for all ages and sure. families, and this new uh, spot they have with the new kind of feel to it, I think, yeah. is achieving that. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to get there yet, but, okay, now the other one is uh, over at the Bergen Plaza, or, no, I'm sorry, the uh, Ivy Cross. area. Yeah, Tarn yeah. Cross. Hardy's, Hardy's, <laughs> Hardy's restaurant. I haven't seen a Hardee's in Twin City area for, what, 100 years? So, right. So what's the deal Frank, on that? we're old enough when it used to be a big restaurant. But they're yeah. coming back strong. I guess they've had new management, and they really keep a tidy store. And again, it's going to be kind of the uh, typical fast food. But we get a lot of residents saying we need more fast food sure. places. So there'll be a nice addition to that area where we already have a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Burger King. So uh, we're excited uh, with their new management, and, and they're really on the rebound nationally. Yeah. So that'll be a good addition. Well, I'm looking forward to that because I, I liked them originally yeah. when, I was, when I was a kid. I, that's when I yeah. used to go there. And we have many more <laughs> restaurant pads in Oakdale, uh, especially up around the Target store. Uh, so again, with the with Super America going in there, we're hoping that the, the volume of traffic comes up and then we start getting more opportunities. Sure. Sure. Okay, uh, changing, going on to something different here. Okay, Summerfest was modified this year to go from uh, what? Through, uh, it was just modified. So you tell us about it. Uh, yeah. What the difference was this year? Well, the big difference is we, uh, everybody's busy during the 4th of July. So we moved the f uh, popular 4th of July fireworks that were only about a week later. We moved them up and put them on the schedule of, of Summerfest. Uh, we also added a band, so we had nice bands both Friday and Saturday evening, and then Saturday evening was topped off by the fireworks. So we noticed an increased volume and a kind of revigorated um, summer fest. We also, our staff does a wonderful job working with our volunteer committee of kind of recreating all our public events, and this was no better reflected in Summerfest, keep, keep, keeping it refreshed. So we have our popular um, fireworks, but we added them to Summerfest, because there's a lot of staff time preparing and uh, keeping that site, sure. uh, uh, you know, getting that site up and running for Summerfest. So to c take our 4th of July effort and put it into one big effort, give our staff the opportunity to have the 4th of July off with their family. Sure. There's a lot of good things idea. going on in the That's a cities. good idea. We also added a lot of things like a, a petting zoo with exotic animals. And uh, each year it'll change. So mm -hmm. people should look forward to mm -hmm. next year's summer fest. Sure. And we're old enough to remember what it was like originally. It right. was in a field over where the old right. where Kmart is. And was, the parade will never change. The it's parade is nice all. 45 minute parade, and short it's getting, and sweet. It's and getting better every time, isn't yeah. it? Just wonderful. Uh, all right, so speak, okay, the, but the, uh, having the fireworks at that night, I mean, how many thousands do we get to come to those Yeah, fireworks? it's, you know, five to 10,000 people. And it's Unbelievable, the vendors, isn't it? And you have a, like a really top band just leading up to the fireworks. So it's a nice Saturday evening for Summerfest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now another thing happened, uh, initiated and implemented a significant pay and classification plan study for city staff. What's that one on? Yeah. About? Well, this is actually part of our, one of our points in our strategic plan. And it was really to bring ourselves up to speed, uh, to make sure our staffing um, is properly paid and we uh, that the, all their job classifications are current. For that, uh, us as a city council can uh, move forward into the future with pay raises that are appropriate and fair. And a city should do that about every 10 years, mm -hmm. and we were long overdue. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep our city, we've got a great city staff, and we'd like to keep them happy and paid Absolutely. fairly sure. and appropriately. 
So uh, to do this study, did you have outsiders come in and, and evaluate? Yes. How did you do that? Um, the only way to properly get it done is get an independent out, sure. outdoor outside. You wouldn't want you wouldn't study. want the innards t telling us. I think no. we need new mo more money no. for this guy, <laughs> right? Yeah, that it was work. a good way to review those um, job roles with the employees to make them understand, and then they got a good feeling of where they stand and mm -hmm. that they're properly paid. Okay. Now, looking into the future, um, the uh, city's Neighborhood Preservation Enhancement Initiative, and we're running out of time, so we're limited here, so can you give us a quick rundown on what that's all about? Yeah, again, that's one of our parts of our strategic Before you say that, I, I, when I interviewed every candidates and everybody for the, this position, every one of them, that was one of the biggest issues they had was neighborhood improvement, yes. so go ahead. And we had started on this prior to the election, sure. so this really was started in about 2013, so we've been working on it and incorporated as one of our strategic plans. We really feel that we need to keep our ahead of the curve we need to keep our neighborhoods vital and, and vigorous. So we've got a multi-point plan to keep the neighborhoods really good. We're looking at some dynamics from parks to policing. Every neighborhood will need something and we've got a menu item. We're going to segment the neighborhoods by natural boundaries like Tanner's Lake may need something different than Olson Lake Estates. But all neighborhoods are being evaluated and we're going to look at improvement techniques. Everything from home loans to uh, improve, getting our church faith community involved in the neighborhood mm. to, to possibly help with yard cleanups and things. So, Wonderful. That is yeah. a tremendous idea. Yeah. And low interest loans if they want to uh, redo their properties exactly. and all that. And a part of that is uh, in our strategic plan, one of our points is uh, commercial redevelopment. And we're actually going to have a loan program for that too, which will be for focus on facades of buildings. And if I could touch base on our strategic sure. plan, go ahead, Frank. Yeah, uh, we with the new faces, myself, new mayor, and new council, new administrator, really felt it was a, and we we would do strategic planning each year. But this was a great opportunity to really sit down through workshops. We. Uh, did all day and half day retreats with our staff to come up with a five point plan. And one of them is the, the preservation, neighborhood preservation, mm -hmm. the internal cultural and staffing, uh, the, our community image and branding, and then our uh, um, community and economic development. And, the, and then their last one would be capital improvements. And all these are kind of <coughs> tied together. So as an example, we want to have our staffing that's properly paid, but also staffing that can be current and react to our needs of our city. So again, in the neighborhood preservation. And we feel that uh, by branding our city and in our, in our image, we're going to be evaluating that and finding out, verifying what we're at and where we're heading, and then work with our Oakdale Chamber, work with our own uh, staff uh, get us all marching on the same page to market our great location. We have a great location for our city, sure. a lot of amenities, and then this way we can bring good businesses. We can compete for good businesses and jobs. And if by again getting back to our neighborhood preservation by having good strong housing that uh, is desirable for a business to move in mm -hmm. Oakdale. And by having strong businesses, it's a good motivator for residents to improve their housings. Absolutely. And then with things like capital improvements, we really feel roads is an area that we're going to be focusing on. We're, the state is way behind on road funding. And I think a good road is really inspiring, sure. really jump starts. So the next road coming up is in 2019. It's not totally firm, but it'll be the interchange of Hadley and 36, mm -hmm. but then we need an interchange on Century and 36 for that's non-stop. But once we get that improvements, we're going to have all sorts of redevelopment along 36 mm -hmm. and the Fleet Farm property, that'll start to take off. It's, there's a lot of nice retail that can go in there, but they're waiting for the freeway to go sure. in. Also we're p working with Woodbury and uh, one of these things I've done, I've reached out to the surrounding mayors to see where we can collaborate. So 
we're collaborating with Woodbury to work with our legislature on the 694, 4984, 94 interchange. What a disaster. Which backs up yes. at all hours yes. of the day. And lastly, I'd really like, because it's not too early to start thinking about Century Avenue. I think Century Avenue, if that was brought up to date, it's a state highway, if it was widened and beautified, yes. The businesses along there would just prosper. Yes. So I really think road investments, again, one of our strategic points of our strategic plan is capital improvements. Yep. Not only city capital improvements, but capital improvements in our roads. Roads is really a life broad blood yes. to bringing strength to our neighborhoods sure. and strength to our economic So you have Century Avenue especially, and that's kind of the roadway into Oakdale. And those properties, some of those commercial properties yeah. need, they're old. They're just yeah. old. But Stan, you know, we're out of time right now. So yeah. uh, is there anything you want to say to our audience before we close our down? Well, I want to say I, it's a privilege and an honor. I wake up each day thinking it's really an honor to be your mayor. I work hard at it, and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's and happy holidays. Okay. Thanks for joining us today on Oakdale Update. Thanks. And good luck to you in the next yeah. three three years, right? You yeah. Three years before Thank we're going to... Thank you. Gonna... I'm excited. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Frank. It's time for a short break. But first, here are some code reminders. Just in time for winter. First up, don't risk a fine by putting snow from your property into the street. Also, on trash day, please place rubbish and recycling containers on the driveway apron behind the curb just prior to 7 a.m. And consider adopting a fire hydrant and keeping it cleared of snow so it's easy for fire personnel to locate in the event of an emergency in your neighborhood. And finally, remember that rather than tossing strings of Christmas lights into the trash, bring them to City Hall to be recycled. It's time for a short break. We'll be back with more of Oakdale Update in just a minute. We're just about out of time, but before we go, make sure you discover the Oakdale Indoor Market. It began on December 5th at the Discovery Center at 4444 Hadley Avenue. It's the perfect place for holiday shopping. You'll find baked goods, jams, sweets, meats, gourmet foods, jewelry, and much more. The next two indoor markets are January 16th and 30th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Discovery Center. That's all we have time for this month on Oakdale Update. For everyone at the City of Oakdale, thanks for watching.